So here's our first mock-up of the Midland Singer suit. Going to a fitting today to hopefully see if it fits well. This mannequin is actually slightly larger than the measurements that we got, so hoping it will be a perfect fit, but that's why you do fittings. Turn it back. <laughs> needs to be lamp roll. Yeah. That's really where I'm most concerned is the waistband and the length, but that's not so hard to change. Why, what are you worried about the waistband? That's going to be big. Oh. if you see how it was wrinkly. Oh, yeah. like it's eased into it instead of... Yeah. Well, that's not that big of a fix. You can just make a smaller waistband for the real one. Yeah, basically what I did is I made the pieces and I fit the sides to into place. Because he's smaller than most conventional patterns are, so... Well, that's the first mock-up. Well, we just got done with the fitting today, the first fitting. Probably won't need a second fitting, will we? No, it went pretty well. The pants just need to be taken in like, I think it's like two inches, but I'm going to leave a little bit more ease in there because he's going to grow. And then what did you have with the jacket? Uh, I think I just need to take the sleeve up another half an inch or so. And also shoulder pads are going to be put into it, so that's going to take That'll it raise it a little bit. bit. But they're only one fourth inch shoulder pads. And I think that's it, other than putting some extra space in the seams to let it out over time. Um, we did go and pick up the fabric today. It's a cotton twill, and it's like, it's a little bit brighter than navy blue. I'm not sure what color blue you call that, but... And they like that fabric, so... It kind of reminds me of like a black blue. Yeah. But we're all set to go. We're ready to get started on the embroidery, and we're going to try to make it to where it's let out of all but I don't know fingers crossed once the fitting had taken place I quickly made the small adjustments I needed to on the pattern and began work on the jacket the first thing that I needed to do was copy each of the front pattern pieces onto the fabric you can't cut the pieces out like normal because you have to have enough excess around the whole piece in order to put your embroidery hoop I also marked with chalk where the lines of the seam allowance would be so that I wouldn't accidentally put any of the templates over it. Also note that before beginning any embroidery or template transfer, I had to first cut the pieces to manageable sizes and then sew in the front darts. Thus began the long saga of hand embroidery. I'm going to apologize in advance for all of the hair slash side of your head that you're going to get to see on this video. It's really hard to film something that you're trying to work on that's really close up to your face. And every time I would look up at the monitor, I wouldn't see anything. But whenever I would look back, obviously my head would be right back in the frame. So up until this point, I hadn't really done a lot of embroidery. As a matter of fact, I think we only had done a few small pieces for some Anna commission several years ago. But I think you're supposed to try to make all the stitches as vertical as possible on pieces like this one. But I decided that I didn't care as much about that because I wanted each of the sections to be slightly different angles so that when the sun would hit it or light would hit it, it would change the highlights, kind of like real clouds in actual nature. So for these birds we wanted to create an ombre effect, which in this case was going from a darker blue to a lighter blue. I did this by offsetting my satin stitches and then slowly mixing in different strands of the different colors in each of the layers. 
Later on, we actually discovered that we could mix the threads instead of just using a singular strand. This made the transition from each layer much more smooth. So this is a shot of me using one of our main reference photos for trying to get the positioning of the yucca plant in the clouds. I didn't want to put an actual whole picture of that in here. If you want to see that, there's a link in the description, just for copyright reasons. But I have to say that one of the hardest parts of doing this embroidery was making sure that everything was in the right position, including having the two sides match each other symmetrically. It was at this point that I finally found an interview with the Midland Singers of where their original suits came from, which is a company called Fort Lonesome Embroidery, and they actually still use 100-year-old chain stitching machines to make all of their stuff, which I think is really neat. So I decided that would be a cool way to change things up for this cactus.
sleeves are one of my favorite design elements overall. I just think that they have such a wonderful flow. Unfortunately, they're sleeves, so you always have to make two of those. And by the end of the second sleeve, I was just so ready to move on to something different. Something else I was thinking about while re-watching this again was how we had to keep track of what colors we were using. Just thought it'd be helpful to advise people if you want to try doing something like this to write down on your templates or even just a list of the different pieces what colors you're using for what. We did this but not very consistently so there was a few moments where we had to just kind of bring our piece with us in order to rematch which is not ideal in the current circumstances. Also, I think something that was kind of interesting is when we first began this project, embroidery thus was 36 cents a piece, I think. Then it jumped up to 52 cents. I uh, just think it'd be interesting to see later on if it goes back down or not. So this sequence of the white sunflowers is the only piece that I could get almost a full time lapse of. I chose this piece because it uses all the stitches that we learned for this project, which was the chain stitch, the satin stitch, and later on you'll see a French knot for the yellow middle. Summer and I both agree that that's one of our favorite parts about this because it creates such a different texture. So I wanted to include this sequence of how I made the templates for the back just because I didn't really do very well explaining in the beginning of how I made them, but in essence what I did was look at the reference pictures and just kind of eyed in each of the elements and then I would cut them out and arrange them. 
on the prototype piece and just pin them down until I like the size and the positioning. This is like maybe one of the t tens of them that I made for this back piece just to get it right. And then after pinning it down what I did is I took some wax paper and marked the shoulder edges and neck edges and some of the side like armpit edges so that I would be able to put it over the actual pieces and know that it's in the right spot. So the Thunderbird on this back piece is supposed to look like the night sky. And I did this by using the same methods that we use for doing the ombre effect on the other birds, which is slowly mixing the threads until you get a lighter color in the middle. I also did some highlights around some of the bigger stars so that they wouldn't just be this stark contrast against the dark. I was actually very worried about the dark Thunderbird against the dark fabric of the suit. But I put a white outline just like they have on the back of the real one, which I later discovered through a screenshot and it actually stands out really well and is actually one of my favorite design features. Another thing I wanted to talk about with the back of this jacket is the colors. It had gotten to a point where we just really couldn't find a good picture of the back. I had taken a few screenshots from two different performances, I think, and it was hard to tell really what the colors were. And then also, I'm almost wondering if they have more than one jacket with slightly different colors because every time I looked at a picture, it would be slightly different. So we decided just to go with our own colors. It doesn't have to be super exact to still turn out great. See that twin on the left? That's me, Summer. While Savannah was doing all that work on the jacket, I was next to her working on the pants. The design on the pants is practically the same as the sleeve, so I'm going to only highlight the deviations. I had a hard time discerning the details of the cow skull at the bottom of the pants, so I ended up going onto Pinterest and referencing many cow skulls to determine the positioning of the suture lines, the orbital socket shape, and the overall shading of the piece. I wanted it to look realistic but stylized and not too cartoonish or silly. I actually really didn't like it when I completed the first skull, but then I got a little distance and by the end of the whole process it turned out to be one of my favorite pieces. Thank you. 
Since the pants were to be unlined, I had to try to keep the back of the work as tidy as possible. So when I needed to add or finish a section of thread, I would pass the tail end under the stitches on the back of the work a couple of times to secure the end rather than to tie a knot. Also, if I needed to travel across a free space between embroidery elements, I would catch threads on the wrong side of the fabric as I went. That way there were no free floating thread bridges to catch toes on. deceptively tricky. Although they stitched up essentially the same way as the birds, their shape and position at the cup of the pant made it easier to draw the tension too tightly and create puckering around the work. So there was no mad dash to the finish line. It had to be slow and steady to the very last stitch. So some of you are probably wondering why I decided to use my fingers instead of some tweezers or other tool for these rhinestones. In essence, I tried several pairs of tweezers and a small rhinestone tool, but nothing worked better than my fingers. I just, I kept dropping them with the tweezers and it was too risky if I dropped them in the wrong spot with glue on them especially.
Well, that was a long video. Savannah, it was a long project. Yeah, I guess. Apparently, we had a lot of favorite parts in this project when we were listening to it. So we'd love to hear what your favorite parts are in the comments below. And I guess if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope we were mildly entertaining. So far. Thanks for making me laugh while I'm trying to film. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa.